Hi everyone, welcome back to another amazing video. Today we're designing this amazing 3D mockup in a very simple new tool made for UI designers just like you and I. So without further ado, let's get started. The first step is to actually go to spline.design. A lovely website in itself. If I scroll down and download and install it for Mac OS, Windows or Linux. Now, once you open Spline and log in, you will find this really nice dashboard. Under this, you have all these various tabs where you can access different things from. I want to go to my files and there is a button here which says new file. Just click on that and it will create a completely new artboard for you. In this, there is already a rectangle. I'm going to delete this. And for the background, I can change the background from the top right here and change it to any color I want. I want this deep and dark blue in this case. And once I have something like this, this is fine. Now I want to add an actual iPhone to animate. For that, what we have to do is go back to this tab, which says your name in this case, this is Puneet. And if I go to library, I will see all these examples of 3D animations and 3D assets. Scroll down until you find something called device model. Click on device model and from here itself, just click on this iPhone, say command C or control C to copy it and go back to untitled, which is our original and just paste it here. As you can see, it's pasted and I'll close this second tab right here. Now, once this has been placed, I want to place this, of course, in the center. Once I have something like this, I need to first replace this image here. So you can replace it with any of your Adobe XD or Figma mockups. For now, I have this add card screen from a very special Figma UI kit, I will have the link in the description. And all I need to do is click on this phone once and under all these layers here, I want you to go to the bottom. There is something called screen here. I'll click on screen and under all these properties on the right, go to material section and under texture, which has 100% here, I'll change this texture and add an image by saying upload image. Now I can simply upload my mockup or screen from here and say open. Once it has uploaded, it adjusted perfectly on this device. Now the device is fine, but I need to change the color of the edges here. It's red right now. I want to change the color. For this, I will choose first all these brackets that we have, bracket one to this last bracket. Change this red to a deep blue again, like we did earlier. You can always use a saved RGB color, which from here, or you can use the color picker to pick one of these colors from the background. Now I've pretty much made the whole device this dark or deep blue, which kind of blends in. The next step in this process is to actually add some lights. You can always do that by clicking on this stop plus here, create new object and add a point light or a directional light. In this case, I will choose a directional light to begin with. And as you can see, it's added a directional light in the middle. I'll probably drag it out. You really can't see it, but I'll probably drag it out towards the top left here and actually add some intensity. On the right, you have intensity. I'll drag it out to increase intensity. I will make sure that the shadows are set to yes, so that it gives more depth to the device. I will also increase the depth, of course, in this case, and I might increase the size as well. In this case, it will basically reach further. This looks good. Now I can always drag around a perspective by holding option and just changing the view on a three dimensional axis like this. As you can see, the light is being reflected from the back to make sure that it comes to the front. What we need to do, click on this directional light, of course, hold space to just go back towards the directional light, hold this blue little uh, handle here and just drag it towards the front. Keep doing it until it reaches the side of the device. And as you can see, light has started to appear here. I can always use the red and green handles to move it left or right. Uh, see how this light is affecting this device? It looks really, really good. I can always change the intensity, of course. In this case, I might decrease the intensity a little bit. Uh, looking good. And I can even change the color. Just like we had earlier, I might give it a light blue or like a light teal color to you know make it pop in this case now we've added color i'll just hold option and as you can see now we have a good amount of light you can always add more light in this case like i added in my original design but for now i have just taught you how to add light you can always 
add more lights like this. Now I want now the device has been set up, I can always add more elements around the device if I want to from this little library icon on the bottom left here. It basically picks up elements from the Google Poly project and I can just uh, say circle or I can say cloud and it will give me a cloud. Now we will actually start to animate some stuff here. So in this case, I will click on this phone and just like we have in Adobe XD, I have this states element here. It adds a new state, which is state one. And the original state is base state. So in this case, I want the original state of the device to be a flat lying device. So if I click on rotation, there are three elements. For X, I will probably set something like 90. And as you can see, it is now lying flat on its face. And so that it increases in size, I can always click on this lock icon so that it scales proportionally and increase the scale from one to probably two or three. Ah, uh, this already looks good and I love the directional light coming from the left. Now, this is basically the base state. The state one would be the standing state, which is by default. In state one, I can always add a little bit of X so I can give it 10 degrees on the X axis. I can give it minus 20 degree on the X axis so it tilts back. I can always give 25 on the Y axis and probably 10 or 20 on the Z axis. As you can see, it is now tilting towards the top right, which I like. So this was state one. We will add another state where the device is towards the left and it's zoomed in to the top. So basically adding a state as simple as clicking on the plus icon here and state two has been added. Make sure before you add state two, state one has been selected. So in, inside state two, I want it to be zero on all the rotational axes and make sure that the scale is greater. So two or three in this case, two is enough. I think even less 1.8 or 1.7 is good. And I will just drag it with my free hand, nothing special and move it towards the left here. Now this is looking really big. So I'll probably just give it a two. Yeah, this is much better. And I'll put it right here. Now I will now add a text layer by clicking on this T on top. It's as simple as that. And wherever I want the text, I just press there. And inside here, I want to say all your cards in one place. Now I'll click on it again and change the color, of course, to a white properly. And I will change the family from Roboto to, in this case, I'm going for Poppins Black. You can use whichever font you like. And I want the text size to be slightly greater. So maybe 34 or 32 would be fine. I will increase it manually from here, increase the size of this text box and all your cards in one place. Probably should be slightly bigger in this case. This looks nice and bold. I can always drag out to highlight some part of the text here and change the color of just that text. Now, once I have this text ready, I will also give this two states. So if I click on this text, I will say Command G or Control G to create a group around it. And now I have the states options. I click on the state, add a state. State one is this, the base state will be a text which is towards the left a little bit like this. And the scale has been made to zero. Perfect. Now I really can't see this text, which is just how we want it. We want another state for the phone where the phone is moving towards the bottom or the camera is moving towards the bottom. So I add another state which says state three, which is fine. And inside state three, first of all, I'll drag the phone just with my mouse towards the top and make sure that the rotation on the X axis is a little bit more, maybe minus 15 for this one and uh, 20 on the Y maybe. Yep, this looks really good. And maybe 10 on the Z axis. Now I will add another text layer, just like we did earlier. Now, rather than spending time on adding another text layer, I just click on this empty object, which is the text which we had earlier, say Command D or Control D to duplicate it. And now we have two text objects here. In this case, I will first of all delete the state one by clicking on this cross here. And now it only has one base state, which essentially will be zero. Now, instead of saying all your cards in one place, I'll probably write something like keep a track of your transactions. Once I have this to make sure that it's behind the phone, I hold option, rotate as we did earlier and just use this blue arrow or this blue handle to push it back behind the phone as such. 
looking really good. I'll shift this a little bit so that it's visible, of course, and make sure it seems as if it's behind this phone. That looks nice. Now I'll add another state for this. And inside state one, this is fine. Base state should be where it shifted towards the left as we did earlier. And the scale is zero once again. Now for the last state of this phone, I will basically add one last state. So four states in all and one base state. And in this case, I will give the rotation as zero on all the axis, scale it back to something like 0 0.8 maybe this time. Yes, this is small enough. And make sure it's somewhat centered based on this light here. Now I need to add some flat circles at the background to give that bounce effect. So I'll click on this circle here and just drag out just like we did in any other design tool. And this becomes our base circle. Make sure it's slightly smaller than the phone itself by holding out shift. I hold option again and drag it with my mouse. Make sure that the circle is behind this phone. Uh, that is fine. Also, I'll change the color from the material tab here to a nice bright blue. I'll hold option and bring it back. And this looks really, really good. I'll make sure that the ellipse has been duplicated two more times. So command D once and command D another time. So three ellipses towards the top. Ellipse two should in this case be slightly bigger than ellipse one or the default ellipse. Make sure it's behind all the things here. Make sure it's centered towards the device, which is good. Hold option, drag out once again, and hold this blue arrow or blue handle and bring it towards the back. Space it out well. And for the ellipse three, I'll do the same thing again. Just hold shift, drag out, and make it a really big circle. Ah, this is good. Now holding option for one last time and dragging this circle towards the back completely. Like this, this one should be quite far away, to be honest. Now I will bring it back to the default area by clicking on this bottom button. Make sure it's centered just like we had planned earlier. Now for all the circles, we need to make sure that the material is actually there in the 3D world. So I'll change the lighting from none to something like Fong or physical. Physical is fine. Do the same for all three circles and reduce the opacity of the last circle or the circle at the back to something like 20. Ah, this is looking good already. Now the last step is to give that nice light effect at the end. So again, just like we added that light here, once I've added that nice point light, make sure it's towards the complete or extreme right in this case. As you can see, if I drag out this point light, you can see the point light being displayed here, which looks really nice. I'll make sure that it's towards the back like this. This is looking good. And I will also give this two states. So one is the base state, like so. And state one is when it moves completely towards the extreme left, like we did earlier, and maybe towards the bottom as well. Now, the last thing is to give states to each of these circles here. So base state should be 0% on scale, so 0 on all the scale axis for all three circles. So just do it for all three circles. Now begins the fun part where we start adding animation. Make sure all the elements are at their base state. The phone, all the text objects right here should all be in their base state. Just double check and make sure. Now I will click on this phone and under events, I will click on this plus icon. Inside this, as you can see, we have different states. I want it to be at state one when it starts. Change type from mouse down to start in this case. And duration and transition should be ease out. For me, it's fine. And 2.5 seconds should be enough. Delay, uh, maybe give it two, that's fine. And that's about it. Ah, as you can see, it animates just like we want it to. To bring it from that initial animation to the text animation, what we'll do is click on this plus icon here once again to create a new event. And under key down, we will click on one of the number keys. You can give it any key, A, B, C, one, two, three, whatever you like. In this case, I want it to be one. Ease in out is fine. Duration is 1.5 seconds, that's good. No delay, that's fine. And the state should be state two in this case. And we will keep on going like this, add more events and just change the key from, from two to three, three to four, so on and so forth. In this case, I want it to be two. Duration should be a little more in this case because it's slowly panning down. 
so maybe three or four seconds. Once all the states are done, duration is set, as well as keys are set up, do the same thing for all these text objects as well. Make sure you add an event. So for the first event, you just want to add key one because it will then move, it'll move the text according to the phone moving. State one is fine and duration should be one or two seconds at max. To make the text vanish after a while, you can always add an event where on the mouse down of the second or the procedural instance, this case, it would be key two, you want it to go back to its default state or base state. Duration should be less in this case, it should be 0.5 or one max, and that's it. Do the same for text two as well. So for the last animation, I will click on each of these ellipses and make sure the event is set to the key down. Duration should be one or two seconds at max. And the transition in this case should be spring. You can add a nice delay if you like. In this case, it should be four, depending on how fast the phone is going towards the back. And for each circle, make sure you add a little more delay. So in the first case, it was four seconds. Once all this has been done and it's been set, of course, going back to the point light that we added for that light, moving effect, we will create a last event, which says mouse down or key down. The delay is about 4.5 or 4.2 seconds. As you can see, I've started the preview. Ah, this looks good. If I click on one, it should animate again with the text. If I click on two, it should animate again with another piece of text. If I click on three, slowly and boom. Ah, and the light moves also. You can make the light slower or faster depending on what you like. But this was basically what we did earlier as well. That was it for today, guys. If you liked this video, make sure you give this a huge thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for videos every Monday and Thursday, and sometimes even on Saturdays. I'll see you next time, same place, same time. Till then, God bless.